Hello, oh my God, we have a lot of people here already. I'm sorry for the delay. I was having a technical issue as probably guessed. Um, it wasn't you working on my Internet Explorer, so I had to go old school and use Chrome. So hi everyone, we're finally here. And I am going to be welcoming the most amazing Andy Foote. A lot of you will be here, especially for him, because we know what a legend he is. So without further ado, let's crack on with my second ever LinkedIn Live allowing for technical hitches, and invite the legendary Andy Foote into the stream. Hello. It's Hello. nice to face to face with you. Hello, the lovely Leah. How are you, my dear? I'm very good. I have missed your voice, I have to say. I have there missed you. speaking to you. So for anybody that doesn't know and didn't hear us, we used to go on to Clubhouse. What? We used to being the operative word. We used to spend every morning pretty much together on Clubhouse, didn't we? Your morning, my lunchtime. Clubhouse um, was a thing. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was a bit of a flash <laughs> of the pan, wasn't it? Three <laughs> months of absolute addiction and then cold turkey, pretty much. Fully, fully immersed. It was immersion therapy uh, for me, uh, certainly, because I wanted to uh, thoroughly understand what was going on and how it how it worked. And then curious as, the... well, as usual. What's that? Always curious. Yeah, curious AF. That's right. <laughs> there's, there's the lovely Ariel Lee. So yes, I mean that was you know that's where we met fantastic people like yourself and Ariel and Liam, and um, oh, Joel and 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 Joel, other folks yes. that, and and Donny swearing swearing Donny with his goats. Yeah, well, so I, I mean, I do miss the crew. I do miss it. And I do I do pop into Clubhouse a little bit here and there. But I just lost so much of my life to it. I just found that yeah. I was literally I was ignoring other things going on in my life because yeah. I was finding and I was learning a lot. I did enjoy it, but it did become very samey, didn't it? However, yes. it did bring into my life a group of other people who were very passionate about LinkedIn, like yourself. And I was aware of you before we started on clubhouse but i wouldn't say that we developed any kind of a friendship i just saw your content around sometimes and it was quite interesting if i'm completely honest i yeah. didn't think you'd want to know me i thought you just start another one of these flash in the pan <laughs> fancy influencers that gets popular quick she'll be gone in six months because you're very serious about and i say serious in a i am at loose loose terms you're a very yeah. light-hearted fun kind of person but Generally, you're yeah the way you work with LinkedIn you're very tactical very strategic there's a yep. lot of you're, you're very curious about all the stats and the data and I obviously that's very in, intrinsically in you to be that curious and I'm very much just like heart-led like being silly and fun and just following my gut instinct so we're yep. quite different but well I mean you say that I, I do a lot by gut too so yeah, yeah. I like I like to nerd out uh, with the best of them. And uh, that's can be quite frustrating with LinkedIn because there are so many uh, variables that go into, you know, what it's happened. It's so unpredictable, isn't it? it and, and it's it so shrouded in mystery. So right. with the algorithm, and, there's so much guesswork involved. And yes. we're all quite going off of our own experience, which can be very different for each yeah. other. I know there have been times in Clubhouse when we've been giving advice and your experience of things has been vastly different to my experience of things. So it's quite hard sometimes to give people proper advice. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think a couple of things. There's there is a baseline. So when you know, when you mention we're different and I'm saying, well, we're not because you mentioned gut. And I go by gut a lot of the time, too. And that gut is based on what I've seen over the years. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have a baseline of what I think is good for me and yeah. maybe even good for others. And I think, oh, OK, that's, you know, that's a classic Leah or that's a classic Ariel. So I, kind how, of know, I know what you're doing. How long uh, have you been so, uh, Well, I mean, oh, eight. So that's, wow. you know, that's when I, that's when I started. Right. right. So what's that? 13 years. Um, so for people who don't know, because I don't know the full background, you were a lawyer. Yes. Well, I so I, not never quite. I mean, as soon as I qualified. So in, in Scotland, it's called a traineeship and you do two years on the job training. Mm -hmm. And I hated it. It was miserable. Didn't want to do it. And <laughs> back in my I mind, I thought you as a lawyer. I mean, you've got yeah. the, uh, you've got the something about you that could be a lawyer, but you're so 
you're a bit of a rebel. I can't imagine. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit of a rebel, but I also didn't. I didn't like to not know my shit. And that, as a train, yeah. <laughs> certainly as a trainee, you, you're like, you're basically at the photocopier, and you're you're worried about fish files. Fish files are basically <laughs> stuff that stuff that you never ever want to leave because if you leave them for too long, then they blow up in your yeah. face. And yeah. it's like it's a career. Well, it's not a curricula, but it's really bad for you and the firm. So you're always worried about fish files. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean. If I if I started uh, my rotation with litigation, so I had to do eight months in in three different departments, and if I did litigation first, um, no, sorry, if I did litigation last, then I probably would have um, stuck with it. But I did litigation first, and I was really green in that first eight months, and I was like mm. clueless. So I thought, oh, I don't like this feeling. Um, I'm not, I don't like if I I don't want to do something unless I can be really really good at it. If I'm not good at it straight away, I'm right. Like, yes, I'm and then yeah. And then there's the motivation. I mean, what are you doing it for? This, this, this is for anything in life, right? Are you doing it because you really want to do it? Or are you doing it because your mum thought it was a great idea and yeah. she would be terribly proud of her son, who's the lawyer? So you, that's definitely the, you know, the, I think the first principle is why do you do something? And the old, you know, the old adage about, well, if you do something that you truly love, then you never work a, uh, you know, a day in, the, a day in yeah. your life. And it's very true when it comes to LinkedIn because this this is not work. This is fun. And that's the thing, isn't it? And that's something that I find uh, so much of my life now is spent on LinkedIn. But I feel like I'm socializing. I don't feel right. like the bits where I'm obviously there's other stuff that we have to do, which de which definitely is work. Whether we enjoy it or not, it is more work when it's actually um, doing working with clients. But the when we're marketing ourselves on LinkedIn and we're boosting our brand, it is fun, yeah. but it has to be fun. And, and yeah. for me, and actually that was sort of leads nicely onto one of the questions that I was going to ask you, um, which I tried, I'm going to be trying to ask all of my guests is, and, and for people in the audience to answer as well, what has been the most surprising thing about LinkedIn for you? And for me, one of the biggest surprises was how much fun I'm able to have with it. And I'm the kind of person, and I absolutely know you're the kind of person that you try to inject fun into every aspect of your life. If you're anything like me, you probably have to bite your tongue sometimes because you're gonna say a joke at a funeral or something. Yeah. Because that's where my head goes immediately to make things comfortable, to make me enjoy a negative experience. I want to make a joke out of it. Yep. And actually, for me, LinkedIn was such a serious place. And it was so intimidating. Yep. And then I was like, hey, hold on a minute. I can bounce onto here like Tigger. I can have fun. I mm -hmm. can make other people have fun around me. And you, you really capture that as well. And that's something that I think drew me to you on Clubhouse and made me go, you're not what I expected. Your satire and your subtle humor and your very good at very subtly taking the piss out of people. And they don't mm -hmm. even realize that they're being taken the piss out of. Mm -hmm. You do it in such an elegant way that it amuses mm -hmm. us. Like like adult jokes slid into children's. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that, that's what yeah. You do, and it's very yeah. clever. I love wordplay. I love puns, and I love you know. I love um, essentially using words in a in a subtle way sometimes yeah. for sure. And I think there's there's absolutely no reason. I think you everyone loses when it comes down to words. You know, using words like fisticuffs because that's like, come on. There's there's no skill to that, and you know, you, it, it, no one loves no one likes. That. Well, I suppose some people love to watch. It, you know, when when two people go at it, there's that spectator sport. But yeah, what's the expression? If you if you wrestle if you wrestle with a pig, then you both uh, you both yeah. end up covered in mud. Um, <laughs> mud. I don't think it's mud. It's not mud. No, there's another word. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I, 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 I saw you. Um, I saw you do your thing uh, before Clubhouse. I thought, wow, uh, you know, she's got it. She understands exactly um, how to how to work this this thing called uh, called LinkedIn, and and by work it, I mean in in a way that suits you. That people go, yeah, I've got it. I understand what she does and you know what she stands for, um, and it's it's confidence. It's understanding, you know, your own presence, the power of your brand, all of that good stuff. Uh, and people, people just do not gravitate towards folks who are being phony um, or, or are try, trying too hard. If you, sometimes you either got it or you don't, unfortunately. One of the things I've really noticed recently, um, and it, I don't know if it's the same for you, there has been a 
a real trend towards this sort of phony influencers of whoever's writing these elaborate stories and we all go and I feel like previously people were more convinced by that but now you've got this group of people who are very, and I hate the word I know it's overused but very authentic and relatable and we're seeing people with who are real having success it's making it more obvious when people are being phony and it's almost like we're going hold on a minute they were our standard for authentic influencers yeah. that said all the right things and then we're going hold on a minute no but there are real people with real stories who have real personalities that are coming through and succeeding suddenly the phony is so much more obvious that it's standing out and people are becoming a lot more wise to it. What do you think's behind that? Well, so I, I've seen that for a long time. Um, I mean, there are people like um, Oleg and Hyacinth. They're the two classic examples where after mm. a while you still, you, you, you get wise. Uh, you know, a lot of people, the longer you spend on the platform, the more you see, and then you more, then you begin to understand, okay, well, I just, I just, saw that exact same story um using different words right so there's only there's only so many times that you can hear about a, a hard luck story right on someone someone who's you know, against against all odds and winning and then you get all the people going yay and reacting but never commenting and you get something going viral because it's like oh that really tugged my heartstrings and there's only many only so many times that you can see that same formula play out before you start to become uh, a little uh, skeptical and then probably a lot more skeptical the more that you see the same kind of thing and it, it's yeah. just is this real is this made up uh, what is the purpose of this post and you know, I, I I still have that um, with 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 personal stuff, right? I we've spoken about this on Clubhouse. I don't share anything about my no, family. No. You might not know that I'm married. You might not know that I have a kid. You certainly won't know her name, her age, none of that. And I see Father's Day, and Father's Day, yeah. So a lot of people that I know are are doing the Father's Day celebrations and they're sharing yeah. pictures of the, I'm never going to do that ever. And Why? What stops you from doing cause, that? Because I'm my my brand. Well, it's not even my brand. It's it's more about what I do. What I do is I teach, and I judge, and <laughs> and I yeah, I'm a judge. So you're so open about it. Judge Muck Andy face. No, I do. I poke. You know, I poke. I, it's like uh, I, you said it yourself. Everything I do is tactical. I don't do anything without putting thought behind it and, and some kind of strategy. So, for example, I'll go after um, I'll go after a trainer who says I'm the most recommended person on LinkedIn, and I go, "What the fuck? Why is that? Why is that so important? You're most recommended. Where's the skill in that exactly? What exactly? You know how I can do that? Anyone can do that. I mean, if you write a book and you run events and you after every event you say, "Oh, recommend me," then yeah, you're going to get hundreds of recs. And then I pointed out well, the, the recommendations because I do that. <laughs> well, no, I mean, so that's why I'm being judgy. But yeah. I'm doing I'm doing it because I'm I'm putting the spotlight on me and I'm getting people to think and I'm laying it out. I'm saying, look, recommendations, you only see the top two. If you're putting hundreds there, who's gonna scroll all the way down? You know, mm -hmm. it's like instead instead of saying I'm the most recommended trainer on LinkedIn, which may may well may be a fact, but color me, you know, color me not not impressed at all. I look at the activity section. If you've written a great book, uh, then you must have some you, you must have some skills as far as LinkedIn's concerned. Mm -hmm. Where's that? Where's that in the activity section? Where's the fresh content? Right. If you suck in the activity section and you've written this great book, then the two don't the the two don't marry. So I'm being judgy, but I'm saying, look, I'm pointing things out about the recommended section, which doesn't really help your brand, um, mm -hmm. or at least I don't think it is. And, you know, I, 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 I choose my battles. I, I, I choose certain things. I say, no, listen, you're stuffing everything into your headline. Why are you doing that? You know, most people just go boring, 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 separate, separated by pipes. You know what's really, really hard? Come up with a creative, right, um, five-worder, which gets people go, ha, ha, yeah, nice. Or just trying you know, to block because, someone in the comments section who's yeah. Spamming. So it's, it's all tactical with me. It's like, here's what I'm doing. Think about what you're doing. Thinking about you know, think about the impact of everything you do on LinkedIn. So yeah, getting back to your question about personal stuff, it's never been me, right? I talk about personal stuff with my mates um, in in real life, 
And people on LinkedIn, if you get to know me really well, then you might get to know some of these things. But I'm yeah. never, ever going to use that as content. That's not content material for me. Ever. That's actually something that I speak to with my clients quite frequently is actually, you know, you don't have to have all of that personal stuff. You have to let people know who you are, but that doesn't have to be. Right your yeah. personal life for me my son is quite strongly my brand because he's my Absolutely. one we're a team yes, and he, he is. Yep. works very well to be part of my brand and to have him included plus it makes fun stuff for us to do together where i yep. can do work because obviously i'm trying to split my life so much with work and juggling everything but people see me being really open and they assume that i'm telling everybody everything right but actually yeah. i never speak no, about I never speak about my family beyond my son and, yeah. and the life of my dad. I don't speak or post pictures of my sister's children and my life as an aunt. Um, I really don't talk ever about any kind of relationships that I've got. Right. Um, and there's a lot of my life that isn't yeah. shared on LinkedIn, but I give people enough that they feel like they know a lot about me but not so much that I feel like my privacy is invaded or I feel like too exposed or yeah. nervous. Um, yeah. and, and that's something that I, I walk, walk the line quite, quite well, I think. Um, sometimes I will go a little bit more vulnerable and share a little bit more personal insight if I feel it's gonna help other people because of the position I'm in now, but it has to be something that I give a lot of thought to before I yeah. share things like that. So yeah. why LinkedIn? Andy, what what yeah. drew you to training LinkedIn from law? Like, was there something in between that, or? Yeah, I mean, there were there are quite a few things uh, between that. I mean, I was a uh, I was a recruiter uh, for a long while. I worked um, in the lobbying biz in the UK in London for a while with the Confederation British British Industry. So wow. I was an account. Yeah, I was an account manager. I was sat down with CEOs and shooting this shit and saying, "Hey, so what can we what can we do for you?" Um, I was. Um, uh, yeah, so I was, you know, I was sat next to people like um, Potter. I don't, I mean Potter. It's um, Potter used to do a, uh, he used to be in charge of Scion, which was uh, Potter Scientific Instruments or nothing. So Scion was a little handheld that I used to have myself, like for years. I was a huge fan, and you know, suddenly I'm sat next to the guy who you know invented the whole thing. Uh, so CBI, I met lots of uh, interesting leaders and. It was cool to be at their level. Um, so a lot of lot of things before LinkedIn and LinkedIn. You know, coming back to um, talking about family, but you know, I, my 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 kid, my child had just been born, and I was at home. Uh, my wife was working. She's uh, she's a banker, and I open up the laptop and I discover this thing called LinkedIn. And I wasn't early. Uh, I was what, four or five years after it first started. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. So let me let me get this right. This is a network which is global, and I can start building things, and mm -hmm. I can start building communities, and I can do it really easy. I can build a group in like five minutes, and I can brand it, and I can choose that group to be about absolutely anything I want it to be. So that's where my that's where my LinkedIn education started with groups. I thought this is this is amazing, what a, what what a, yeah, full of potential this thing, and that's that was my education. That's how I started teaching myself and getting to understand LinkedIn through the years. And then the other thing I used to do as a sort of second nature was take screenshots because uh, I thought this is cool. I've got to capture this. This is cool. I've got to capture this. So I ended up with all these these screenshots. And then the next logical You're thing for me as a, as a writer. Uh, what's that your phone must be absolutely full of memories oh yeah absolutely. database full of just the, the yeah the mac the mac has got wow. thousands upon thousands of uh, of screenshots which needs to be organized by the way so i've got these screenshots and then you know i love to write of course you know i marry those and i start writing uh, about real life examples of great stuff that i find on linkedin yeah. and one of those articles three stunningly good linkedin summaries um gets pole position on google for two two wow. searches that i had no idea about had no idea about seo and because it was you know pole position for many many years 
uh, that little blog of mine, LinkedInsights.com, blew up, and I got I started to get millions of visitors over the years. I thought, okay, I better keep this up. So I always wanted to, you know, write the very best stuff that you couldn't find a- anywhere else about LinkedIn, and I called it, you know, advanced LinkedIn strategies was the tagline, and that's what I wanted to do. I just I, I wasn't content with just doing the reportage, right? The here's here's what changed today. Hmm snore here's why it changed today right so it was always about going deeper because i felt that was the sweet spot that that, you know a few people were doing back then it was look really explain why this is happening so you you know you become a true a true teacher go ahead and that's the biggest difference for me actually and something that i try to get across and actually i was filming with mike winnett and the team on friday um doing my 60 second elevator pitch video which i'm very excited about um And one of the things that I was trying to explain actually as a LinkedIn trainer, and I'm not, this is in no way detrimental to other LinkedIn trainers, but the difference with what I do is I don't just show you how to do it, like what you need to do and how to do it. I explain why, the why behind it makes everything make more sense. If you don't teach the why and the impact that what you're doing has, for me especially, and and because I need to hear it, I need to give that to other people. When you explain the why and you change it to real life situations, relate it to real life networking events, and they go, why wasn't I doing it that way before? Now it all makes sense. And it creates that clarity. And then when they're going forward, it all is so much more, makes so much more sense. And it's so much easier for them to implement strategies when they get why they're doing it. Exactly. And it's like teaching children science experiments. You don't yeah. just show them how. You need to show them the results. You need to show them the process and the thought process right. and what all goes on with it. So if you don't know all the elements of the process, you're going to end up falling down because you, you're you not understanding the point of doing it all. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. that's one of the things that people fall down with when it comes to teaching or training at all is just giving them a do this, do this, do this every day. Right. And this will happen. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it, you can give you can give someone yeah you can you can give someone a, a fish and they'll eat for the day. But if, if you exactly. teach them how to fish, then of course they can yeah, they can obviously yeah. eat, eat so for the rest if, of their life. Give the listeners or watchers, I forget they're watchers, yes. though, not not listeners, yes. something tangible. So you create reassuringly expensive brand builder. So what yes. for you? What is the number one mistake? that clients come to you with or that you see people making when it comes to building their own brands? Right. Oh, so many, so many. I'm not sure if there's number one. Um, you can give us a couple. We've got yes. Five. Well, well, there are lots. I mean, a, a lot of the time uh, people, um, certainly the people that come to me recently are more focused on other things. Uh, what the, I worked with this one influencer um, a, few, a few weeks ago, and he was, I mean, he was huge. But he was huge on other platforms. Twitter was one of his things. And he completely neglected LinkedIn because he didn't fully understand um, you know, the, 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 the potential of it, but also not just the potential, the nuts and bolts. So he was pushing yeah. out you know, content, for example, and he was just push, push, push without really – you know, understanding that he could have been getting, um, he could have been getting traction by changing the way that he was uh, tackling it. So, mm-hmm. little things like you know, not asking a question at the end of a post, um, or just pushing out the same kind of post instead of you know, not the same post necessarily, but the same kind of post again and again and again. Yeah. And stuff like you know, not being, not understanding how to actually go out and getting an audience that you a lot That's of people don't realize. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that you don't sit back and you you publish and then you respond and that's it. No, you can actually go out and you can you can start building, uh, pulling people, not just pulling people. Yeah, and then there's there's a lot of branding stuff that people you know branding mistakes that people make that they. I mentioned the headline. The headlines that I see, I don't know about you, but most of them are pretty. It's like, come on. I that post you did last week about the headlines, and I saw there was a couple in there, and I jumped in and did suggestions, and I was like, but. The yeah. suggestions I've done will create conversations. That's what it's all about. A conversation like my profile, and I don't know yeah. about you, my cover story has my jingle in it. 
That jingle is a bloody earworm. And the amount of messages I get on a weekly basis saying your theme tune is stuck in my head. And then I had my name pronunciation, which was a song. It's not now because someone reported it, but it was a song. And again, it was a conversation starter. Really cool. My headline is a conversation starter. Yours is yes. a conversation starter. If yes. you get, give people a reason to get into your DMs, it's so easy to then try to create a, a conversation, a good feeling. And that generally leads on to a yeah. working relationship of some description. Absolutely. Even if it's just Absolutely. a recommending you to somebody else, you yes. stand out in their mind. And that's a doubt. the most powerful marketing tool. Without I've a doubt. also got a, an edge with the fact that I look distinctive and that what? has brought me to stand out. No, you like, don't. Not Thank that you. many people with neck tattoos on LinkedIn. So that's not, especially not women. Um, so that's been an edge for me. But anything that you can do to differentiate yeah. yourself. There was one Absolutely. guy I talked to, he had like Power Ranger because he was a, he was a, um, he specialized in electrical systems, green electrical systems. And he called himself like the Green Power Ranger. I was like, that is amazing. Cause I yeah. will remember that. And even now it's like six months later, I still remember it. I've yeah. got a client yeah. who called himself a video ninja because his, his brand is named after Samurais. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rupert bassadoni has got the circus in his um, name and all of his banner and everything is a circus. Everyone, if they've got it, if they, if they, if they're no. doing it right, everyone's got something unique and something ideally catchy. I mean, it goes back to something my dad told me like years ago as a teen. Uh, he was talking about his time in Africa with the the British Army. He says, "Yeah, one of my buddies, he came into the bar with a parrot on his shoulder." I said. What, the fuck? what are you talking about? Yeah, well, he did that because he knew it would be a talking point, right? He knew that he would get people, um, women and men, talking to him because he had this parrot on his shoulder, this trained parrot that would yeah. say cool stuff. And it's like, that's it. That's branding, essentially, is having that parrot, yeah. having something truly unique that people haven't seen before, that they're fascinated by, that's intrinsically interesting. That's the piece that often is missing. And uh, a lot of the time uh, I work with clients and they just don't understand what their why is. They're right. They don't they don't understand what it is that's unique about them. That's a, a strength. I hate the word superpower, but it's a it's a strength that definitely can and ought to be leveraged to move the needle to get you to, you know, progress and advance. So, that, I mean, there are fundamentally two things on LinkedIn, aren't there? There's your landing page and then there's everything else, which is usually content driven. Uh, those two things you got to get right, and there's a lot you can do on the landing page to get right to look to to look immaculate, to look interesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But guess what? No one's going to get there without all of the activity driven driven by you. By the way, right? Mm. Keywords mm, keywords are okay for job seekers, I guess, but keywords are not going to get you there. That's a fundamentally yeah. passive strategy, which they're is right. a zero sum game. They're, 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 they're bells and whistles, but they not, can't be the fundamental part of your strategy. You, your voice and your comments and your content and how you project yourself everything proactively on everything. other people's content yes. and in your own that has got to be the yes. biggest brand builder right right, right. That's everything every absolutely without a without a shadow of a doubt everything that you do there right ought to impact ought to bring visitors to your profile page that's mm -hmm. what it's all about and my concern and you've probably seen this too I'm sure other folks in chat have too is if you're a close watcher on, uh, of linkedin it seems that things you know views are going mm, right and i had this discussion with um a friend of mine the other day, and he says, "What do you think this is, Andy? What, what's going? What's behind the the sort of the gradual reduction in views, and possibly, you know, also hand in hand, maybe gradual reduction of engagement? Are you seeing that? I'm saying, and I said, well, I'm seeing, I'm seeing it slightly on mine, but not not enough to worry, because as long as I get a decent level of engagement that I'm used to, that's fine. I mean, if it's going down over the years, I said to him, I think maybe it's just because there are." I mean, it, it's probably supply and demand. You know, there's more supply and therefore your own section of demand might be declining I, because of I that. Think, you know, I think we're all moving back though now, aren't we? Because life is starting to open up predominantly um, yeah. in the US and in the UK. We're starting to open up a bit more. So I think we're probably just not quite as immersed in our online community as we were six months ago. That's, you know, that's, that's yeah. got to play a slight part yeah. The weather's changing. Yes. We're all going outside a little yeah. bit more. You know, I I do think that that is going to play a part in it. Like my main growth was during the real peak um, yeah. COVID lockdown that I saw the, the the that first year 
the biggest growth and it's slowed down the growth has definitely slowed down now um which is kind of a relief but i'm not concerned about it i guess it's all going to move towards paid advertising eventually but yeah. I, I don't think those things don't matter if you've got the right network full of the right people then it doesn't matter if you've got 50 views 500 views 5000 views if all of those views are predominantly by people you know you can do business with or who will help to push your content further or who will know people that you can do business with so you're still having relevant views and i think the relevant views is the crucial crucial part of it there's no point in me having a network full of 85,000 people from parts of the world that can't afford or won't buy my services so i could push my network in asia and get it huge and have millions of followers like a lot of people do but they don't i've never i've never once had a client from asia never so right. why am i pushing right to an audience that will not invest in my services yes, yes. well I, I you know i i'd say the same thing about india that you know i haven't had a client from india but no that, never that's not true i just i i just work with a lady uh from from um i forget whereabouts in india it was it might have been pune um so, I mean, that, you know, it, it, it does change over time. But fundamentally, I think for for people like you and me, there are two things that are working for us. Number one, there's the brand name, which gets bandied about. So who should I work? Do you know anyone, you know, who does this, this, and does it really? Oh, Leah. Yeah, there's Leah Turner. Oh, I've not heard of her. Well, I'll check her out. And then the other thing is the quality. What? You've not heard of me? I know, it's bizarre. Quite, where, where, Timbuk, <laughs> Timbuk 2, under a rock. And then the other, the, 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 the other thing is, uh, I think the quality of the, the people that follow you and engage with you so uh, if you're if you're looking at the commenters and if, if you look to see what they do and they're not just dropping you know awesome but they're actually wanting to have conversations with you every day that's yeah. always fabulous to see because of that that of course is the algo rocket juice that the algo the algo loves to see that and so if you're getting a good standard um, of of back and forth, you know, high quality engagement on most of your content, then you know that's always always going to work for you, regardless of how big your base is. Yeah, you know, if your base mm -hmm. is fifty or one hundred and fifty, as long as you've got um, the median um, engaging with you and 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 people that, or you've got those amazing people who have you in a spreadsheet and have your tab, you know, have a, a tab ready to fire up. And yeah. they don't rely on the algo at all. I mean, gotta love, gotta love those people. Yeah, so absolutely. it's yeah, it's fascinating. But the COVID thing is interesting, Leah, because uh, you're right. Um, some people, um, probably a lot of people, are probably back at the desk now and probably have less time to to fart around on LinkedIn. Now they've got a boss looking over over his or her shoulder. But I would love, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would love for LinkedIn to to do a study and say, you know what? Um, here's here's a breakout of who actually you know, joined us, a uh, proportion of people that joined us on, on, on LinkedIn uh, as soon as the COVID uh, hit hit office office shares or what office occupation and yeah. here's what it here's what it is now and i bet that the most most people have said uh -uh, i'm not going back to work I'm, I'm this is this has changed the way that i think about working why am i going to jump in a car for, fight the traffic for 40 minutes just to get in an office and and you know waste time with meetings my productivity has gone sky high since i've worked at home with the kids and the dog and all of that all of that razzmatazz I'm, I'm sure I would love for LinkedIn to do some kind of a study on COVID, okay. you know, COVID during post and yeah. because that that would truly map out what's going on in the world in terms of uh, work from home. Firstly, I want to say hello to Daniel Disney, who is in the comment sections. Hi, Dan. Um, Daniel. Yes, we're both big fans of Daniel as well, aren't we? Um, so two things. You've now got LinkedIn Live as well, haven't you? Yes, I have. I'm and are you taking your 16 questions over to yeah. LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for sure. I've got a few ideas on that. I think that's an, it's it's just an interesting one for me. The only the only slight concern with that is um, I have to I have to check the LinkedIn rules for LinkedIn Live, but it used to be that you could only you had to do a certain program in terms of you know time, and 16 questions is probably 30 minutes. Um, it yeah 30 minutes at most because longer than 30 minutes it becomes repetitive regardless of how many different we've questions got, I have. Not, we've got uh we've still got 118 people here and i'm about to do 16 questions with you andy but nice nice 
Okay, but, so we'll try and go through them reasonably quickly because there's a couple of longer ones in there. Yes. I'll, have to, I'll, have to have a, I'll have to have a natter with you about Restream. A couple of things. I cannot enter a chat for the life of me. I cannot enter chat and I cannot move it up or down. I'm on Chrome. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, well, um, I've had to use... Uh, so, yeah, I have used Chrome. I can see the chat. Um, yeah. But it moves as quickly as I would like it to. And it doesn't let me feature... It doesn't let me feature comments either. And I haven't, oh, here we go. Oh, look, we can, I've done it. There we go. Hi, Daniel, I've done it. I figured it out. I didn't realize that. Nice. Right, 16 questions, okay. Yes. Some silly Good. ones, serious ones, okay. So. No, what? Yeah, I had to, I chucked in a couple, I chucked in a couple of serious, serious? ones. Serious? Oh yeah, gosh. here and there. So first one, nice and easy. Yes. What's your favorite thing to put on toast? Such a rubbish question. <sighs> Yeah, so that's a good one. <laughs> right. You can steal these. I'll send you the list, and you can use them in your show. All right. All right. So I, I am a, uh, I'm a man of habit, a creature of habit, and for the longest time, my go-to um, has been cheese. Now, not soft, so spreading cheese. So in in the UK, and you know, I've been trying to get it online, but I can't. Primula. <gasps> so Love Primula. Right. What Primula. Put Primula over. Uh, I don't know why they haven't, but they should. So Primula was always my my thing as a definitely as a kid as well. Uh, ham and cheese, probably ch cheese and chives, whatever. Even the, even the even the the prawn. But it's now true. I do in the in the US, it's laughing cow, which is uh, triangle. Not the same as Primula though, is it? Primula yeah. on a Ritz cracker used to be my thing. Okay, what's the best yeah. live show you've ever seen? Could be the music. It could be live show. Could be music. Could be theatre. What's what? Okay, so I'm going to go with a Chicago favorite, Blue Man Group. Oh, Blue Man Group is, I've not seen so those live. I saw the, them these, in Vegas. Yes, so this, it's a very fun show, especially uh, for a kid as well, because you know they always mix it up, and you you. You used to, I don't know if this is still the case, you used to never be able to get a shot with them. So you could never have, a, you know, an actual a selfie with a blue man uh, person. And I have one. And I don't know if that's still the case. It's, you can make it an NFT. Sell it for yeah, me. I could, exactly. <laughs> $18,000. Thank you very much, man. I've got this one from yeah. Helen, okay? What does success smell like? What does success smell like? Um, what smell? To me, to me, these days doesn't have a smell but whenever it has a sound right uh i get a ka-ching whenever i get uh, i think money on venmo from from a client and it's like oh thank you very much 1800 bucks thank you I very much like that. i get i get a message i get a little email yeah. saying you've got a booking and i'm like happy dance yeah so <laughs> I don't, it doesn't have a smell it has a sound for sure smell eh, no no smell no interesting okay. question yeah, I feel like I feel like mine always smells like warm air on a hot hot tarmac, like when you Ooh. get like, that free smell. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, yeah. so all right, so so there's a there's a smell that I fell in love with recently, and I was uh, I was in in the south, and I was um, at one of the big U.S. stately homes that I can't remember the name of now. It's the biggest, and there was a an amazing smell wafting as we were walking by. Um, one of the restaurants, and it was a magnolia a tree, and it smelled amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think anything that smells like freedom smells like success to me. A few people have said to me, "What's success?" I did a podcast this morning with Rick Cooper. He said, "What's what defines winning for you?" And I said, "I've booked August off to spend the summer holidays with my son. That for me is the pinnacle of me succeeding to be able to do that and not have to worry that I can't pay the rent." So, uh, yeah. right, okay. Define your own personal brand in three words okay um judgy muck andy face <laughs> oh winningly perfectly quirky just as you always are andy okay um what decade of music was the best for you yeah i think i'm gonna have to say 80s person. 80s because yes, well. that's uh, you know that's when i was at college so mars pump up the vo volume uh it's a i mean i was a dj as well at college so i was in, in excess all lined up on clubhouse always and you yeah. picked some absolute classics and i was like wow absolute throwback i love yeah. that yeah um, what's your favorite swear word 
so there's if there's you can't three. Play on LinkedIn Live, just like give us a clue. Yeah. So there's. Uh, well, I, I can probably say it. I mean, there's three, yeah, and it's it's one of my yeah. it's one of my dad's favorites too, and I, I I take a lot from my dad. So it's for fuck's sake. I love that one. That's so so satisfying, yeah. isn't it? For fuck's sake. Really, really satisfying. Yes, I love that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What if you decided your LinkedIn career was over forever? Yes. How would you like to be remembered? Ooh. How would I like to be remembered? I've got you thinking now. I think this yeah, is the longest you've ever been quiet. Well, it's, it's, it's legacy, isn't it? It's like, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, as someone who I think tried really, really hard to be unique and go the deepest you know go the go go the deepest ever on all things linkedin so um i'm not talking about understanding everything about linkedin but i'm talking about drilling down and and, and truly trying to understand stuff so oh, very proud right. very very proud of my my algorithm um my 25 facts about the algorithm back in 2019 i thought that was that was well researched that was bringing a lot of different sources that was building on excellent people like richard van der blom and other folks that i had the pleasure to work with and that to me i was really really proud of that that article and a lot of people said wow andy that <laughs> that was pretty amazing that's the best thing i've ever read about the algo before so that made me feel very very uh, very proud that's awesome okay so you're you're ending your LinkedIn career. You're going to go down in a blaze of glory with a massive Soon. band. What Soon, you yes. Band. What would you what? do to, if you're if you're going out in a blaze yes. of glory and leaving your LinkedIn career behind? You're going to yes. do it by getting banned. But what are you going to get banned for? Ooh. One final one final act of defiance and yes. rebellion. I think it would have to be a LinkedIn Live Moon. <laughs> Okay, not today though. <laughs> okay, <laughs> followed followed by a breast thing. <laughs> well, we've yeah. seen that one before. You've had your cleavage out. No one moaning. I have. I have had my I'm cleavage out today, Andy, because I thought you know I'll just be decent. <laughs> yeah, this is the classy <laughs> show today. <laughs> okay, what yeah. makes you a business rebel? Um, good question. What makes me a business rebel? So. All right. If you if you look at my writing, I don't uh, I rebel all the time. Uh, so particularly on posts. So I'll put stuff in parentheses um, just because I can. And I'll put I'll use you know I'll use a, a slash because I'm trying to you know get people thinking about this and this. So it's kind of a shorthand that I developed. Um, and sometimes you know it can look a bit weird or like a code, but that's unique to me. No one else does that. So in that like sense. That. Yeah, in that I sense, like if you look hashtags. at my posts, I like, I like using like using comedy hashtags. Just chucking yeah. a random hashtag that makes no yeah. sense that is just like yeah. an extra little thing. Right, and I've always done that on Instagram and Facebook as well. So it's just a random thing yeah. that I do. People always end up yeah. going. It's like an afterthought that they laugh about. Okay, what is because you know you're like a music and movie kind of person. What is an absolute must see movie for you? Like if you met someone who hadn't seen it, you'd be like, oh, what? You haven't seen this? What's what movie is that for you? Yeah, I would be shocked if people have not seen Train Spotting. Oh, that's such a good film. It's an yeah. excellent that's movie. A really it's, film, isn't it? That's not like a is that one that is is really big across the world or is that like a British thing? So, so uh, I mean un unquestionably, you know, it's a Brit thing, but um all of those actors have um not all of them, but most of them made it in the in the states. I think I'm right in saying they did well in the states. Yeah. Um so yeah, I mean that, that that's a classic, and it also I I I I saw it um, for the whatever the third or fourth time recently, and it stands the test of time. It's a it's I was a, listening it's to the soundtrack on Friday when I was driving up to Warrington. Actually, soundtrack is I was there, I was there with Iggy Pop, Lust for Life, yeah. like bounce yeah. around the car. It's yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah. what is something that surprises people about you that we wouldn't necessarily know or think of about you? So um. All right, so I think the biggie, which constantly surprises a lot of people because they don't read my about section, is they think I'm American, just because. Yeah. 
And so that that's the biggie. Um, I think, yeah, I think the other thing might be that they don't understand or, or don't, they don't realize how much of a laugh I like. I mean, I love, love, love comedy. I love to, I love to joke as you, you it know. It surprised me about you for sure. Yeah. I thought, I yeah. thought you were going to be very serious. And I thought the yeah. same about John Asperian. And I thought both of you were just yeah. going to become a total nightmare. And that I'm just this bubbly little bimbo that's come along and gone, oh, look at me. I'm going to pretend to be a trainer. And you've gone, but you weren't like that. So both of you have completely embraced it and, yeah. and joined in the laugh with me. And, and in fact, John has agreed to join me on one of my lives at some point. Excellent. So, yeah, yeah, I'm getting big hitters in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, so my, my dad would tell me a joke whenever I'd speak to him. You know, he's he's a very, very funny guy. And I get I get my comedy roots from him. And my, Do you my, live near my, him? Is he in America? I, no, well? no. He, so he's in the South. He's in Sussex. In oh, the my area. Where I grew so, up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize you grew up there. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Billingshurst in no West. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he. Yeah. So he's in. Uh, he's in Cuden, Bexelon C. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I I lived in Brighton yeah. for a while as well. So just down the road. Oh, amazing. Oh, it's a lovely area around there. I I used to go clubbing uh, with my mate Greg the Builder um, in in Brighton in my in my heyday. Oh yeah. Oh. I miss it down there for sure. Okay, this is yeah. this is an on trend one. Do you have any tattoos, Andy? <laughs> I don't have any tattoos. Have you ever been tempted? I have not, which is oh. uh, so again talking about my my father here. So um, you know most of his most of his buddies would have tattoos in the army in the sixties. It was a thing, yeah. right? Regimental or otherwise, they ju- they would just. They mm. would just do that to their to their bodies. It was it was a thing. Except my dad, and mm. to me, so I would always see you know his mates tattooed, and not not a one right, not you know, knuckles, nothing, and that always that, that always that always struck that always struck me as dad being himself saying no, I'm not going to do that. I, I don't want to do it. And so not that I take a lead from it in that in that it's just yeah. i've never wanted to do it never wanted anything you know permanent enough um on my board strangely enough i've got them because my dad had them he was in the navy ah, and he, them. And he was so in the navy he, yeah he was in the navy ah. and so he was out in gibraltar just before i was born and narrowly avoided the falklands um oh, otherwise good. i might not have been here Indeed. But he had them. He had uh, nine or ten tattoos, and really? I remember. So they, for me, they were something that I always connected with my dad. So when I grew up, yes. um, it was something that, even though he wasn't, because he passed when I was ten, um, but as I grew up, it was something that helped me to feel closer to him. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, we are we are influenced that you know a great deal yeah, by, sure. by our parents, aren't we? Absolutely. For sure. um, what's the next one we've got? What makes you irrationally irritated? <laughs> <laughs> like for me it's uh, middle lane drivers I fucking hate middle lane drivers this won't make it sense to the Americans yeah. but in the UK you can yeah. you only you on our motorways yeah. our freeways right. you, mustn't, you can only overtake on the right hand side so you have to go around people and we have people yeah. that sit in the middle lane and yeah. so we have to go two lanes over to go past them because they're yeah. going slow in the middle lane that's not yeah. thing in America but so, that makes me rage yeah, so I'm I'm the exact same way. I've got this thing about following rules, and for you know for an army brat, who uh, essentially you don't fuck up at school when you're an army brat because um, the, the discipline is always there. It's not directly from your dad, but it's from his his CO, right? So he's from from his commanding officer. So you know that if you fuck up, then your dad is in shit with his boss. So there's that sort of handed down, and you're just a good boy generally. But in terms of following the rules, uh, yes, the people who are, you know, shoddy drivers and you're stuck behind them and you're thinking, what the fuck are you doing? And you're in the <laughs> confines of your vehicle and you're shouting like an like idiot. at school drop-off. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like, why are, you, why are you stopping there? No one else is stopping there. Oh, you're privileged. Do you think you can stop there? Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're holding me up. I'm important. I'm important. Here. It's, it's, it's completely irrational. And so I'm, I am getting better. I used to go, I used to, you know, go, beep, beep, uh, effing and, 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 and blinding. And then I would like look at them as I drive by. Um, 
so I'm, I'm I'm less like that now. But the thing with COVID was a problem for me because especially when we were travel, well, if we traveled and we didn't really travel, but the one time we went south in, in the southern states, there's this this general non adherence to wearing a mask. So I would find myself in a supermarket in uh, wherever it was, Florida, and the guy behind me who was standing too close to me was unmasked. I had a mask on, so I would be looking at him and going. Mm. I don't want someone to stand that close to me anyway. No, I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, it's, but you're breathing on my, no, you're not breathing on my net, but you are breathing COVID towards me. And unfortunately became politicized and people said, well, I, I don't have to worry. It's land of the free. I can, I can do what I want. Yeah, you can do what you want as long as you don't infect me with a, a disease, you, you muffin. Uh, so, yeah, that was a problem for me. I had to, I had to just take a deep breath and understand that, all right, you're probably not, you're probably not going to get it. But that was, to me, it was a red flag. It was like, so you're not going to wear a mask. Great. And you're going to endanger me. Great. And that, you know, it's a perfect yeah. form. Perfect I think that's form. actually probably a, an over, overarching one for me is people having a lack of self-awareness and how, what they're doing impacts Absolutely. those around them. Whether yes. that, that's yes. family sales pitches, yes. DMs, whether yes. that's, People constantly yeah. asking for something of you and thinking, well, hold on a minute, you're not thinking that there's yeah. 200 people doing it's, that. It's, it's, okay. it's the it's it's the obliviousness of it. It's like mm. not taking into not taking your surroundings into account. Yeah, yeah, it's little stuff like if you're chatting in front of me on a path and I'm trying to do my sport walk and you're in the middle and now I have to walk around you because you're so engrossed and you can't just move. Blah blah blah. It, it's tiny stuff like that. If I thought about it too much, then I would probably end up going mad. <laughs> yeah, there's been some amazing ones in the comment sections. People saying someone said about um, tractors being on main roads. That is really annoying, but I don't think they can get from field to field without going on the main road. Um, someone yeah. said uh, TV news reporters who cannot keep their hands still while telling the story. That's me. I'm like a, <laughs> I'm one of these people that's like over. I should have been Italian. Like I'm always talking to my hands. I'm so annoying like that. Um, what is your go-to takeaway food? Oh, go to takeaway. So, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I hardly get it, which is a problem. Well, not really, because <laughs> I'm fat, but, yeah. So my, my go to would would be Chinese without a, a shadow mm -hmm. of a doubt. But but Chinese with 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 chips, and you just don't get Chinese with chips in the states. I haven't had it for years. Really? But, yeah, yeah. You, so, I, I mean, mean Chinese the, takeaways in the UK do everything from fish and chips to Thai yeah. to garlic bread. So, like, yeah. I used to love getting Chinese with 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 chips. It just became my thing. And then, you know, the best thing that I discovered in Canada was poutine. Again, fries mm -hmm. with gravy, with cheese, Everything and a, a, a great poutine. Can't beat it. So, wow. yeah. So very, very healthy. <laughs> well, takeaway is very rarely healthy, is it? Okay, two LinkedIn ones to finish. Firstly... If you could speak to Daniel Roth, Ryan Rolansky, or one of the guys at the very, very top, just you and him. Yes. And it's all hymns. We need some women at the top in LinkedIn. We if do. you could speak to them one to one, what would be the first biggest issue that you would want to bring up with them that you'd want fixed? So, I mean, the, the biggie is look, why don't you embrace the, the fans? Uh, what is this arm's length? thing that you've had for years with people who are your you know the platform's biggest fans who who do nothing but try and elevate the game on linkedin that's all they're trying to do is elevate the game making it a better place with uh, amazing suggestions um born of experience by the way because we, you know we are the people that are they bring, a, the bring some of the as consultants to say you know what do people really yeah. need what are the real problems people are we, facing we we are your testers we are your beta testers and we've been testing oh. testing testing and you apparently you just seem to 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 you know hold us at arm's length oh. uh and the example of the classic example of that by the way is you know this this rule not sure if it's still current but at one stage linkedin live if you do a linkedin live you cannot speak about linkedin you you don't you, you yeah, can't that be. possibly be still in force because the amount of LinkedIn trainers that have LinkedIn Live that talk nothing but LinkedIn on it is right, a, right. You know, they're the main right. users of it, surely. Yes. Yes, yes. So that would be the number one. So the overarching yeah. is, look, embrace your, you know, the influencers, the people that talk about LinkedIn all the time. Uh, you know, your your strong, your 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 biggest advocates do that. The second would be 
look, stop with the spin, right? If you the, the the spin is 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 not is not has never worked, and by spin I mean, uh, you know, LinkedIn groups. They're going to be ama- We're going to do amazing things with LinkedIn groups. This was last year. Just you know, wait till you see it. We're going to have chats about it, and you're going to invest all your time meeting with us in various cities, and we're gonna we're gonna take all your advice on board, and then yeah, we're gonna we're gonna change it. It's gonna revitalize groups. Fuck all happened. Nothing. I Zero. really wish that as well. For sure, they need to stop promising things that they're not delivering. Just and stop yeah. bringing new features until they've they've made yes. the existing yes. ones work properly. Because I think that's something that they are guilty of getting excited and creating new features like stories and create yeah. code. And actually, the reality of what they are, yeah, nobody really understands the point. There's not enough promotion and and advertising about what's the point of this what am i supposed to use it for yes. I turned yes. creative mode on and turned it straight back off again i was like i don't like it i don't i don't right. really get the point so i don't even bother using it okay yeah. the last question was and this is something to add some value to all of these 93 people that are still watching what? we've had between 90 and 130 people on here at Super. all times I saw, which is Super. amazing, isn't it? That's um for yeah. for this time on a Monday lunch time, Monday afternoon. I'm I'm really impressed. So obviously we've we've had a big draw. So one last thing is yeah. for everybody still watching, your number one tip to start gaining some traction, some making some money on LinkedIn. All right. So my number one tip would be to before you do anything at all, if you're just starting out. Before you do anything at all, um, I want you to be uh, the best possible student of LinkedIn. So I want you to I want you to f- fully understand, um, you know what what the profile page is, what it, what it's what it's supposed to do, um, how to become an all star, uh, how to write a cracking about section. Uh, yeah. It's really really hard to do this, but come up with an amazing slogan for your brand. Your brand is your name. Yeah. The headline is your slogan right? Think about yeah. it in those terms. So think about slogans for brands and what they do for those brands. Uh, they've got to captivate, they've got to summarize, and they've got to essentially make you memorable. They've got yeah. to have that, that impact. So yeah. do that. That's part one uh, of this. The, the, the training. Part two of the training is spend at least a week of looking at um, all of the high engagers. So by high engagers, I mean people like Leah Turner, right? People like Joe Lougey, uh, people like Ariel Lee, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, wanna, I want you to look at their stuff. I want you to understand why it's getting the high engagement that it is. So figure that mm-hmm. out. And then I want you to think about, okay, how can I do that, replicate their success in terms of high engagement in a way that works for me and yeah. for my brand. So in terms of what I stand for, what I what I do really, really well on LinkedIn, how can I do that via content? How can I flex my intellectual uh, muscles via content following the example that those guys and gals have set? Yeah. That's, that's my advice. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Andy. Before we say goodbye, I just want to say to everyone, if you haven't already had a look, um, on my profile, you'll con- you can see that in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be hosting the Ultimate LinkedIn Mastery Masterclass webinar with Daniel Disney, who is a notorious social seller. So if you haven't got a ticket and you want to find out more about it, go to my profile. You can have a look, see if you can get a ticket. Um, we have got some left. So it'd be great if you really, really, really want to know how to un- how to sell on LinkedIn by being yourself, how to find the right clients, the right engagement, all of that stuff. It's all there. Have a look on my web, my profile and you can get the link. And a massive, massive, massive thank you to you, Andy. Thank you for spending Monday morning with me. It's been a great start to the week. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I shall speak to you soon. Probably not in Clubhouse, but no, we'll be, we'll, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Thank be on you LinkedIn. so much for spending your morning with us. And to everybody that spent the whole time here, it's still 80 of you watching, so that's amazing. And I shall see you hopefully next week. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye.